Welcome to our Landry Award preview special as we count down to the presentation of the Landry Award for the 2020 season. I'm Bill Jones, and tonight we reveal the five finalists for the Landry Award presented to the top high school football player in North Texas. The Landry Award was first presented in 2010. Jonathan Gray of Alito High School took home the hardware as a junior running back. In fact, Gray won the Landry Award in back to back seasons in 2010 and 2011. He's the only two time winner. Gray scored 205 touchdowns in his high school career, leading Alito to three straight state championships. So it's only appropriate that as the Landry Award starts its second decade, we begin our list of finalists with one of the biggest impact players for the Alito Bearcats. JoJo Earl is one of the top wide receivers in the entire country, having signed with national champion Alabama. As far as JoJo's coach and teammates are concerned, the only thing better than being JoJo's teammate is getting a front row seat to watching JoJo in action, whether it's lining up as a receiver or as a Wildcat quarterback. JoJo has been a chief reason the Bearcats advanced to another state championship game. It, it's something special. Sometimes I don't always get to see what he does, but when I go back and watch it on film, it, it, it is very special. He's, he's one great player. I mean, he's obviously going to Alabama, and he's, he's amazing. JoJo is a fun kid to be around, and he's a fun kid to coach. You know, I'm going to say without JoJo, we probably aren't where we're at right now. He works. I mean, he, he really works hard, and then he comes in every day with a smile. His heart. He's got great heart. He loves what he does, and he would never trade it for anything. He wouldn't trade us for anything, and he shows that a lot. And his hard work is—it's just indescribable. Well, what JoJo does is he—he he makes everybody believe we can win. When he comes in into the locker room every day or into the weight room, he wants us to work as hard as he does. And he might not be the most vocal guy or one of those guys, but he'll come in here and he'll—he'll he'll work hard, and we feed off of the energy that he provides. We've had. A lot of good football players come through here, but he's the most unselfish I think I've ever seen. You know, Jonathan Gray was a lot. He and Jonathan Gray are a lot alike. They, they care. The team means more to them than their own individual stats, and that's what makes him such a good player. If he didn't have that attitude, he wouldn't be as good as what he is. Next in our list of finalists for the 2020 Landry Award, we go to Collin County. Ralph Rucker, quarterback at Lucas Lovejoy. Lovejoy Leopards head coach Chris Ross explains the impact that Ralph Rucker had on his team this season. Uh, it's easy to brag on Ralph. You know, his, his leadership is, is unique. For somebody his age, his maturity level, uh, the confidence that he gives the people that play with him, it's unbelievable. What was your reaction when you found out that uh, Ralph is a finalist for the Landry Award? You know, not surprised, uh, just proud. Proud of him and his accomplishments, and I'm so excited that other people are recognizing what, what we and Lovejoy have gotten to see for the last several years. What you know about uh, Coach Landry, it sounds like uh, Ralph is the, the, the perfect uh, candidate to be a Landry Award winner. Absolutely. You know, I grew up. Uh, you know, watching the Cowboys, I think we all looked at Landry as somebody that we tried to emulate. Well, how he instilled character in everybody that he touched, I think we as coaches all wanted to emulate that at some level. And then you look at a guy like Ralph and watch what he did as a young man with his teammates. Uh, I mean, he, he's doing what we want all of our kids to do. And I understand he's more than just a football player as far as an athlete goes. He's a multi-sport guy, isn't he? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's one thing I love about Love Joy. You know, our kids are just competitors. You know, they're not football players, they're leopards. And uh, the thing about a guy like Ralph, you know, he's a, a state level wrestler. He went to state as a sophomore. And then on top of that, he's an excellent baseball player. Uh, and he's a, he's a catcher on the baseball team. And, you know, he, anything he, Ralph does, he does at a high level. A lot of coaches like to have wrestlers on their football team, and, and but you think of them as being more defensive players. What, what about having a wrestler as your quarterback? Uh, well, it kind of speaks to the grit and toughness that this kid has. You know, Ralph, his competitive spirit and his team first mentality, uh, Ralph could pretty much make us better wherever we played him. 
No one put up the kind of numbers Ralph Rucker did in Lovejoy High School's high-powered offense. 47 touchdown passes, only three interceptions, and another 12 scores on the ground, leading them to the state quarterfinals. We have three more finalists to reveal for Player of the Year honors as our countdown to the Landry Award presentation continues on CBS 11. The Landry Award for the 2018 season recognizes T.J. McDaniel of South Lake Carroll Senior High School. Two years ago, T.J. McDaniel became the first player from South Lake Carroll High School to win the Landry Award. T.J.'s brother, Cam McDaniel, was a finalist for the Landry Award back in 2010. Current SMU Mustang T.J. McDaniel won the award as a Carroll Dragon two years ago. And this year, another Dragon has become a finalist for the 2020 award. Quarterback Quinn Ewers is the consensus number one ranked junior recruit in the nation. The Ohio State commit led the Dragons to the Class 6A Division I state championship game and has earned the respect of many. Uh, he's a leader. He definitely leads the offense to, to victory. Quinn is for sure. The man, he, he's the man with the plan. He's a stud back there, you know, everybody knows it. You know, just playing with him, you just know the ball's always going to be there. No matter, no matter what route it is, no matter how much space you have, he's going to put it right on the money every time. Uh, he's great, obviously the number one player in the nation. He's a great leader. Even when he was hurt, he was always in here uh, taking notes and leading practice. He's the number one quarterback in the entire country for a reason. Um, I think but what people have realized inside of our field house, we knew it, but outside, how tough the kid is. Uh, mentally and uh, physically from bouncing back from the injury he had, had surgery and worked his tail off to get back on the football field and compete for a state championship. And he's, he's led us the right way for the last four weeks. He'll usually, you know, if we don't give up any sacks, he'll buy us some donuts or something <laughs> after, the, after the game next day. And uh, he thanks us and tells us great job. But I love the man. He's a very good leader for our team. He, uh, he's a vocal leader and he can lead by example. But um, I appreciate Quinn for a lot of things that he does. I mean, obviously, super talented. Uh, but when it comes to character and everything, um, Coach Landry um, um, exemplified. I mean, th there would be no uh, better, uh, you know, award recipient than uh, Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers returned from sports hernia and knee surgeries to lead the Dragons to playoff wins over Arlington Martin, Euless Trinity, and top-ranked Duncanville. And there's another Class 6A quarterback that has led his team all the way to state title weekend. Keith Russell joins us now to unveil our next finalist. Keith? Hey, Bill, the Cedar Hill Longhorns wouldn't have had such a great season if it wasn't for their great leader on the field. Caden Salter rounds out his Texas high school career, having attended three different high schools, but finally he found himself at home in Cedar Hill, a place where he could rise and shine. And now he gets set to play on Saturdays and hopes one day, very soon, he's playing on Sundays. I recently spoke with Cedar Hill head coach Carlos Lynn and the young man, the special young man who is now a finalist for the Landry Award. What would you say in defense of Caden when it comes to the best players in this region? Well, you know, uh, you got you have a young man here that first of all know, knows the game of football. You know, we, we trust him to make a lot of decisions on the field. 85 to 90 percent of the time, he's, he, he's right. And the 10, 10 to 15 percent that he's wrong, he makes us right. So, you know, it's almost like, you know, you, you, can't, you can't go wrong a, a lot of times just because his innate ability to extend plays and, 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 and make a, a wrong situation a better situation is always, is always good. That you are finalists for the Tom Landry Award, the high school Heisman, as they call it. Let's give it up for him, guys. What does it mean to you to, to be in competition for an award that takes – into account more than just your football skills. If I win that award, it'd just be a, a lot in the, the community, the city, everything. Just the feeling will be amazing to win that award. It's just a big award, and especially with the pandemic that we had this year, 
knowing that with with us not uh, not knowing that we're gonna be able to play football and not win this award for this year with the pandemic that's been going on, it'd be a, a huge blessing. This Sunday, Caden makes his way to the University of Tennessee. So, Bill, as in this Sunday, like his high school career just ended, and this Sunday, he and his family will be driving to Knoxville. That's a quick turnaround. In this case, he's a quick study. That's right. He plays in a state championship game on Saturday, and he heads off to college on Sunday. That's the way when you're playing state title games in the month of January. You know, Keith, that guy has, he has a certain flair about him. He has a confidence about him. What is it that impresses you the most about Caden? It is. It's like a quiet confidence, and I've spent more than my share of time at Cedar Hill recently. And every time I come up to him, he has the same demeanor. He's like, I'm sure of myself, and that's how he comes across. I'm sure of myself, but I'm not full of myself. And I even got it, tried to get him to play around a little bit, Bill, in the interviews. And I said, hey, man, some of your other teammates can do mean impersonations of Coach Carlos Lynn. You got one? And he was like... Man, I wasn't worried about what they were doing. I was worried about the game plan. I wasn't paying attention to that stuff. That's the type of business approach that's going to take him very far. Uh, it sounds like he's very smart, too, which is another thing we're looking for in Landry Award recipients. Keith, we appreciate it. And we continue to reveal the list of Landry Award finalists still ahead. We profile the fifth finalist, plus the story of an area student athlete who deserves recognition. I'll explain as our countdown to the Landry Award presentation continues on CBS 11. for the 2019 season recognizes Jackson Smith in Jigba of Rockwall High School. Last year's Landry Award winner, Jackson Smith in Jigba, was coached by Rodney Webb at Rockwall High School in 2019. Coach Webb took over at Denton Geyer for the 2020 season, inheriting a talented roster, including our fifth Landry Award finalist, quarterback Eli Stowers. Stowers suffered a major knee injury in the 2019 state championship game, but recovered in time to play the 2020 season, leading Geyer to the state semifinals. Coach Webb tells us his reaction to Eli Stowers being named a finalist for the 2020 Landry Award. I've only had the opportunity to coach him one season um, and, and an unusual season at that. Uh, but knowing what his career has been about, knowing the success that he's had, uh, I was just really excited for him. Very deserving. What is it when you first got to Geyer that you noticed about Eli that kind of set him apart? Well, there are a lot of things that make Eli special. But I think when you get right down to it, it is his leadership. It is easy to find kids these days that are great leaders by example. And you need to have guys like that. But it's difficult to find leaders that can also be vocal, that command the respect of all of their teammates and inspire those guys to be better. And that is, I think, Eli's greatest quality is his ability to make those around him better. A year ago in the state championship game, he goes down with a severe knee injury. And you got the guy or job a couple of few months after that. What was it that you noticed about Eli and just his rehab from the knee injury that really impressed you about him? I got a real sense early on of, of his compelled nature when it, when it came to his rehab. Uh, it was something that he, he attacked with veracity every single day. And uh, he actually uh, got back to full speed uh, well before the doctors felt like he was capable of doing that. And I just think it says a lot about his love for the game and his work ethic. So what do you anticipate uh, his college career will be like? I just think he's one of those kids that's always going to rise to the occasion. He's a kid that's, uh, that's set for, for success. And it's, it, it, it's not just his athletic ability and his physical ability, but it's his mentality. And I think when he gets to Texas A&M, he's going to rise to the occasion and he's going to do whatever he's got to do to be successful. And there's a lot of different ways to measure success. And, uh, and I think for him, whatever that measure is, he's going to achieve it. So here they are. Look at the five finalists for the 2020 Landry Award. Quinn Ewers, the quarterback from South Lake Carroll. Ralph Rucker, quarterback from Lovejoy High School. Eli Stowers from Denton Geyer. Caden Salter of Cedar Hill High School. And wide receiver JoJo Earl from Alito High School. 
You know, every year there are dozens of players across North Texas who are in consideration to be a finalist for the Landry Award. This year, no different. But we did have a player that could not be considered, even though he met the criteria. Highland Park quarterback Braden Shaker. Braden's mother is CBS 11 News investigative reporter Ginger Allen. And contest rules prohibit immediate family members of CBS 11 employees from being able to participate in the award process. So even though Braden certainly demonstrated both the skills and the character to be a potential nominee. He was ineligible because of his family ties to the station. With that, we thought we would give Braden a tip of the cap for an outstanding high school season as the starting quarterback at Highland Park High School. Back in May, picture day for the Highland Park football captains. I've dreamed about this for forever. Uh, always wanted to be a captain at HP. It's a, it's a big honor. Scott senior quarterback Brayton Shager couldn't wait to don his freshly starched HP football white shirt, jeans, and cowboy boots. Yes, sir. This is a away game day. It's higher uh, every single every single week. So I mean, this is what we do to take our pictures. It's fitting that Brayton is wearing cowboy boots for the first time, considering the boots he's filling as a first-time starting quarterback as a Highland Park senior. I've dreamed about this for 10 years. I mean, I've always been told I was going to be the Highland Park quarterback. But Braden has had to wait his turn. His freshman year, John Stephen Jones, now at Arkansas, was leading the Scots to a second straight state title. And in the last two years, Chandler Morris, now at Oklahoma, has been at the helm, winning another state title. Someone once told me you'd rather be the guy who replaces the guy who replaced the guy instead of having to, you know, replace two guys as, as successful as they were. They want to see if I make it. When my back used to walk, put my head to the sky. But Brayton Shaker has been preparing for this moment for as long as he can remember. And it all kind of started right when I was born. My dad put a football in my hands. I mean, my mom's been friends with Babe for forever. Brayden's mom, Ginger Allen, worked with former Cowboys quarterback Babe Loffenberg at CBS 11. And nearly a decade ago, Brayden would join Babe and his sons, Joe Willie and Luke, for quarterback drills. I was probably about eight or nine. Uh, it was in his backyard. Actually, Luke was trying to play quarterback at the time. Um, Joe Willie, I think, was probably a sophomore in high school or something. I mean, we were just out there tossing the ball around, and I'm just a little kid trying to soak up all the information I can from uh, from Babe. I mean, because he's obviously a great quarterback, and I mean, uh, anything I can learn from him is huge. He will tell you he's a great quarterback. <laughs> yes, sir, he will. <laughs> Braid's an outstanding young man, and he's got a lot of character, and he's worked hard to be in a position to be our starting quarterback. And even though he is yet to start a varsity game at Highland Park, the 6'3", 200-pounder, quarterback team grind, filled with college prospects, to a 7-on-7 national title in February, and now has 14 college scholarship offers. Well, they see a combination of good size and of good velocity and accuracy with the football. Uh, potential is uh, way up the chart because he's uh, still going through a growing spurt. He, uh, you know, carries himself real well. Uh, again, talented, can can throw the ball with anyone. Um, hasn't had his hasn't had his chance to necessarily show it yet. Thirty yards. Braden has been showing his stuff all over Highland Park since his flag football days. And he knows all about the rich quarterback history of the winningest high school football program in Texas. Goes from Matthew Stafford to Luke Woodley to Henry Allen, I mean, John Steven and Chandler. I mean, so I'm kind of the next guy in line. I just got to follow what they, what they set uh, as a standard of this program. Have you ever heard of Bobby Lane? I have, yes, sir. <laughs> Left him out, yes, sir. <laughs> I haven't watched a long, long time yeah, ago. No film on him. I don't think they were running the spread off it. No, I think it was triple option with Dope Walker. <laughs> <laughs> and now, 75 years after Bobby Lane and Dope Walker led Highland Park to its first ever football state championship, Braden Shager lived out his dream this season, leading the Scots all the way to the state quarterfinals, where he showed his true grit battling through a broken jaw and four chipped teeth suffered in the first half, never coming off the field as he finished his high school career with his head held high. 
And what a great future lies ahead for Braden Shager, who committed to the University of Hawaii last summer and will make his final college decision on National Signing Day the first Wednesday in February. Coming up, we wrap up our preview of the Landry Award presentation. During a season of uncertainty, these coaches help their team shine. Join Bill Jones as he unveils the five finalists for Coach of the Year. The Landry Award, a CBS 11 original, Saturday night at 11 on CBS 11.